the focus of Pikes Peak Ringers, Pikes Peak Youth Ringers, and my personal philosophy is the idea of moving while ringing. Some people think the movement distracts from the piece. It's hard to watch, um, and it takes away from the musicality, which I don't agree with at all because I feel like the movement makes it more fun to watch because it looks like the ringers are actually engaged, and it's fun for ringers to move too. Yes, sometimes I can understand where people come from when it, when you get so-called too much movement, and or one there's specific like choreography in a piece. That I can understand sometimes because I feel like some pieces I don't agree with it's some people's philosophy on well we should do this sort of movement at this point in the song. I'm, I'm more focused on the just one foot in front of the other back and forth moving motion. Well some people I've noticed even that they don't like because I'll be at festivals where Kevin McChesney's directing or Jason Wells and he tells both of them tell festival, um, festival attendees one foot in front of the other move forward this and I hear people like right behind me criticizing their criticizing what Kevin or Jason are telling them and it's really unfortunate because I feel it's just an added visual effect I think it's also based on how early you start bells if you start in a group that is adults and none of them move I can guarantee you you're not gonna move it's just kinda how it goes but if you start in groups like Pikes Peak Youth Ringers Susan starts every year with just kind of talking about the movement thing and just moving as a group. Movement, great. Choreography, eh? It, it has to fit the piece. It has to be the right kind of piece. I think the best place to do choreography is those gimmicky little pieces like Pling Pling Plunk and other stuff like, well, because we're doing, we're doing Pling Pling Plunk and PPYR. <laughs> we literally start in chairs. We're sitting in chairs doing all the malady. Then at one point in the song, we stand up, we loop our hands around, our, our arms are kind of through other people's arms, and we play our neighbor's bells. Then at one point, we cross our own arms and everything, and it's just like, that kind of stuff, I think with that type of piece, it's fun. It's, it's really absolutely cheesy. There's no getting around that. But that's, that's the piece. Like, it's not meant to be a serious piece like Nocturnal Fantasies. Um, in, in Nocturnal Fantasy, we have our kind of curtain effect when we're moving back and forth, but we're not adding choreography. Whenever we get new ringers, generally they don't move. Well, as the year goes on, you can definitely tell that they're more used to moving and they do all the movement. And it's just kind of fun to see that transition. I just wish that would be more common around the world. <laughs> That's one reason why I'll probably get some crap for this. I don't like a roller ringers. Yes, they play. They play great. There's no doubting that. Dave Harris is a great director, I'm sure, but I've never had exposure to him playing it. And yes, I love the fact that they can ring all the music they can, and it's really impressive that they can record for as many publishing companies as they do, and still learn their own music. So they're a great group with that part. But I just find when they're ringing, like there's pieces like Wizards, they should have done so much more with that, because them standing feet next to each other, very close to their bodies, that drives me nuts in any group. Like, the one piece where I saw them do any sort of movement is when they did Don't Stop Believing, where Dave Harris had to get them to at least start. Like, he got the bass bells to do it, but they're just doing the same, like, four measure pattern. That's another thing that I will get to here in a second. Um, they're just doing the same four measure pattern, like, all the time. So, like, when they're doing all the accents on two and four, like, they would do the head banging thing. Well, he tried to do that with the trumpet clef. They're just doing another little melody thing up there, which I'm pretty sure you could memorize because it's the same freaking line the entire time. Like, you could memorize that, and they could have fun with it. But I'm sitting here, like, that is your encore piece. That's what you're sending people away remembering. If you can't get people to remember your last piece in some way, something's wrong, I think. When I went to do my music scholarship audition out at Concordia, um... I, the group there, they move, sort of, but not a lot. And that's, that was my one thing that I knew going to college. There's not, sing, there's not one single group in any college, anywhere, that moves, like, at all. <laughs> I'm sitting here, I'm like, oh, God, this is going to drive me nuts. And 
I know that I had to change it. Well, the all the rings, they move at least a little bit. So I'm not completely like with Dr. Banky when after audition, he's like, like, oh, you did great. You just need not to move as much. I'm like, yeah, I know. Yeah, because that's all I've done forever with bells. I've never not moved. So unfortunate. I'm like, we'll see if that policy will stay the same while I'm there. I might catch a couple people.